All right, guys, let's do this. We're going to do a little bit of a, uh, a back testing versus real life, except I don't actually have the real life stats done because I haven't been logging my trades regularly. Um, work's been kind of crazy, so I haven't actually finished logging all of my trades, but that's okay because I can tell you right now I'm red. So, uh, red on, I think I actually recovered through most of June and then lost a bunch the first week of July, so I'm going to be digging myself out of that hole. Uh, and here's the thing, the part where I'm kind of kicking myself, right? This is what my results should have been had I just followed my plan from the beginning of June up until um, now. This this final trade actually would have hit profit yesterday. So who doesn't want to make $4,500 in one series of trades? Now you can see this is actually one. This is one of those times the market throws you a curveball and you get a million type twos and I didn't trade any of them. In fact, I went short when I should have been taking a type two long. And then I got even more short when it pushed up again. So what ended up happening here is at the very, let's pull up the chart so we can actually talk about this and, and have it in front of us. Uh, this is on the four hour chart. We'll keep it here for a little bit just because it's a little bit more clear. Uh, we came down to this bottom zone right here and uh, ended up tagging out. And what I did in real life that I shouldn't have done, uh, my rule, generally speaking, when it comes to tagging out, because if I tag out, I'm looking immediately for a retest to the downside. I did not give this candle time to close. I'm pretty sure my stop, it, it might not have been exactly here, but it was somewhere near here. Ended up tagging out of that. I actually was on my way home from Scranton, which is like a two and a half hour drive. So I pulled over somewhere because um, this was in the afternoon. Yeah, pulled over somewhere. It's some like abandoned mall somewhere, I guess, in the Wilkes-Barre area. Everything up there looks abandoned to me. Um, pulled over, set my orders, and then went on my merry way and proceeded to take a loss in both directions. Um, in the back testing here, I, I did not do that because we got the breakdown right here that would have tagged me out. And then my general rule of thumb is I want to see a break and then I want to see us hold on the opposite side of that zone for a little bit. So it's not a fake out wick that I'm trying to suddenly go the opposite of. And that's exactly what happened to me. So in real life, that trade did not work out as well because I was driving, didn't follow my plans. I saw how hard it was coming down and I said, yep, no way that's snapping back up that fast. So there we have that. Um, this would have been, I think, an FOMC day. I don't remember if I traded that in real life. Um, so uh, I did not. Uh, I So per the back testing rules, we would have tagged out here. So we'd be looking for a break and a retest to go long. Um, I like this. We got, a, got through FOMC. Then we pushed up. We hit the speed bump. And that's something of like pressing the reset button. I think I actually thought about taking a long trade here in real life and decided not to. Um, so in the back test, I, I might technically be able to add another trade in there that would have been a quick type one, type two, would have taken profit on the type two, loss on the second type two. Um, but I'm not, I'm not comfortable calling that a break to the upside and then a retest until we did this. And so then in the back test, type one, type two, tag out. So ended up taking losses both directions, took the losses here, took the losses here. We pushed down. I had this, I'm going to go ahead and highlight this just so it's a little bit more clear. I did have these lines drawn out. I thought about taking the trade in real life and I decided not to because I just taken two full size losses right there. And I was like, yeah, you know what? Screw that. I don't want to play around with that. Um, so I'm, I'm highlighting that I'm making it purple. That's a speed bump. Uh, Don didn't have that as a real zone. Um, we're going to talk about Don's zones here in a second because there you have that. And then there's this other one further down that mine's way off from there actually for some reason like it should not be that close so i'll have to uh do some playing around and figure out what i'm actually drawing down there so but don even said this price action right here he did not care about it although this blink oh yeah i would have shorted that so we have that. Don Don also just did something weird. I realized this. I went to one of his YouTube videos and realized that the charts link. Uh, this is what I get for not being involved in the group. TradingView changed something with the way that their charts are operating now. And so um, 
the charts link doesn't update this chart anymore. I can't just pull new charts from him, um, which is super annoying. So he has a zone something like right here-ish. And it's it makes me really uncomfortable, honestly. Um, I do not like having zones this close together. Of course, my my zone up here is a little bit closer, you can see, so that we actually get some interaction on the top level. And I drew that out because of interaction that I saw over here. So I did shift my zone. We got this break and retest to the downside right there. Um, I actually, unfortunately, tagged out of puts in real life right there on that push up and then did not get back in for the rest of the ride down. So um, this this zone makes me uncomfortable because I can't really build my rule set around it. So I'm like I'm I'm in this trade right now actually. Um, I did not take the type two. I didn't realize it until just now that that was a zone. I have that set there, and then I immediately have another limit order. So I'm hoping if we break like if that breaks and we're suddenly uh, screaming to the upside, then I'm just skipping a couple of green candles to get back in short up here in the zone and just trying to follow my freaking rules so i have that and then i also um this will be a story for another day i think if you've been watching some of my videos you realize i've been playing around with think or swim so i do have a position on there as well slightly different i need to get some other limit orders set on there they're gonna see about knocking down my commissions for me so i'll give you an update on that whenever that comes out anyways back testing results that's what we're here for uh let's go back to our continuous contract so we can talk about this back testing stuff so uh, I got screwed up because when this chop happened, when, when this noise happened, I wasn't confident in anything anymore. And so what I did is instead of just following my plan and being like, yeah, the zones work. I know what I'm doing. Like instead of following the plan, like I said, I'm going to and like has proven through back testing time and time again to be a profitable trading system, even when you do take a series of losses, for example. Uh, yeah, instead of doing that, I decided to take matters into my own hands and try to be more subjective about my trading, basically going back to old bad habits that have come back to bite me in the butt here in the recent week. So uh, a major component of that, um, we took the trade. Uh, so I said right here, we closed out sort of below the zone, um, chose not to re-enter short because the candle just shot right back up into it. So that was not a short entry per my rules. Uh, tag the speed bump here. I'm looking at that as a break and a retest to the upside. And instead we took the loss there. That happens. Uh, hard to say what's going on right here, right? We got a we got a tag from the downside. I think that was a profitable type two trade. I should have left all the little uh, markers on there, but then we have this this happening right here, and it's kind of like, okay, is this actually a break and retest to go long, right? Because when you're looking at bar replay, when you're looking at this, is this a break and a retest? Like there's that that red line right there. That's that's where I'm stopping out on that. If I'm going short, so go short, tagged out, and then just kind of immediately fell back into the zone, like real weirdly, just sort of real awkward. So in hindsight, even you know how they say hindsight's 2020. I found the one exception to that where I'm like. I legitimately don't know how I would have handled that in real life. I probably was just sick of taking losses at that point. Um, I think this this type two would have worked out just fine. Yeah, it would have made money on that, but then you tag out there. I think that was like a $500 winner total because when the type twos are profitable, the rest of the trade is going to be profitable. Um, and then this happened where it pushed up, it made the little doji candle, and I'm like, all right, uh, it in this back test, I didn't do this in real life. In this back test, I said, okay, if it pulls back down, I'm going to take the type one. We took the type one. Uh, I think we actually got a type two on that. And then I think I was this a loser? No, that would have been a winner on the type two at least because it would have been definitely would have been close enough uh, for the three to one. I'm pretty sure. Watch me be a liar. Yeah, that, that would have been a winner. So I said, per the back test, that was my re-entry. So that trade's a little bit iffy. This is definitely a clear, like, all right, if we pull back, um, we want to we wanna get back in long. Um, and as you can see, that's actually what we did in the back test. So, or sorry, was that over here? That was over here. We pushed up this trade. I took, oops, took this trade in real life, smiley face. I was actually giving this as an example to Krista in the chat 
of um this is one of those weird instances where i took the type one and we pulled back we pushed up we tagged that type one again i'm still in the same trade this was difficult in real life because i was starting to get really like finicky and just wanted to win stuff instead of following the rules like i'm supposed to so i took the type one it went green it went red a little bit and then i it was a winner so uh happy that i had a winner there um in my we'll we'll go ahead and pull up what i was actually trading this week because i shifted zones a little bit and the main reason is this price action right here this price action right here and then this price action happened right after i moved those zones like look that's like a, a break and a retest to the downside that's clear sign of rejection we're coming down hard right there i actually did take this trade right here where we were kind of making a little trend line thingamajig and so i wrote it up to about here before i stopped out i trailed my stop which i said i wasn't going to keep doing but i did that and instead it just went all the way up there so missed out on what would have been an, an easiest trade but that would have been a loss going short for my rolls this is where things got really subjective and bad um not to say like i didn't like this this section of the chart right here i did okay right up until this um i thought Oh, I tagged out a Bitcoin. I was shorting Bitcoin. So I guess my investment in Bitcoin is going up now. Uh, anyways, I I tagged out of this. I actually shorted right here. Incredibly dumb. I think Don did the same thing, though. I was, like, so convinced. Like, this, this little fake out right here, which goes directly into uh, Don's speed bump zone. I was like, yep, here we go. Time to go short. I shorted that, I'm pretty sure, and then we hit the zone, and I went back in short, <laughs> and uh, you can see it would have bounced just fine, so, and then this is that series of trades where you had a type 1, and, and check this out, this is part of why I'm losing my mind, because I have such a hard time doing this in real life, in backtesting it's super easy, real life it's much more difficult, 2 to 1 risk to reward ratio, there we have it, for the type one, it's gonna be right about there. So our two to one is gonna be a little bit lower, right there. We tag that type one, type two, profit, type two, profit. Push back up, push up, pull down. Type two, I got in because of the wicks here, I did scoot that one up a little bit, so a little less profitable. Well, no, I mean, it's still a winner. Type 2 winner. I only did three contracts instead of four right there in the back test. Uh, not in real life because I'm dumb. I shorted right there. And then finally, we hit profit on the type 1 that we've had that whole time. So from here, come on, do what I tell you. From here all the way to here, that is seven days and seven hours all in the same trade. Um, I've never done that in real life. <laughs> like I've, I've investment trades that last that long. I, I have not developed the capacity to say, okay, if the type one takes a week to hit profit, so be it. I'm trying to get cute in and out of this zone stuff right here. Uh, I mean, I made money in, during that week, right up until this happened. And then I lost it all because I got too heavy short because I'm dumb. So, um, Basically, all that to say, if we actually follow the rules from the beginning of June till now, risking $500 per trade, we would have made $9,732. And instead, in that same time period in real life, I'm red because I didn't follow the rules. So uh, the thing that really threw me off was coming into the beginning of June. Let's uh, go away. Coming into the beginning of June, so there we have the end of May. We took a series of losses, took that huge freaking win at the very end of May. Didn't do that in real life either. And then told myself, I need to just follow the rules. And then like a week later, forgot about the rules <laughs> and uh, didn't follow them really at all. Like honestly, if, if I'm being rated, if I had to grade myself on how well I'm just following my rule set for the month of June, uh, I failed completely. Um, I, I think once, like I said, once we hit, oh, come back. 
once we hit that turbulent portion down here, which is like, oh, that's the 19th and 20th of June. What was I doing the rest of the time? Taking losses on the way down, which is actually according to the rules. So I probably, what probably happened is I took a couple of losses. I don't know if I ever got back in short on this trade, actually. I think in the back test I did, I think in real life it missed me by like a little bit. Um, so just got to pay attention to stuff like that. Hard to say. I might have had my limit order set up a little bit higher or something dumb like that. So, uh, would have I in real life I took the loss here. I was actually in puts though because I saw this this breakout coming um, because it's flat here. We broke through the bottom, so took the loss here, took the loss here. Don't think I got the re-entry. Went long, took a loss. Went short immediately, took a loss. And I don't even remember if I went long at that point. So there we have it, halfway through June, and it's been like loss, 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 loss. Um, and that that probably started messing with my emotions more than it should have. Um, so here we go. That's only showing up as. That would have worked out just fine. And then. Loss, loss. There's a winner there. That was probably that one short. Oh, break and retest type one short. Yep. And then loss, loss. Only two losses. Because I was better in back testing than I'm in real life, which doesn't surprise me. So got to work on that too. The whole, uh, once again, the the proof that back testing is can be easier. Um, there's certainly less emotion. It's much easier to just follow rules and go with it. Um, so in real life, I was probably trying to fudge things and got hurt as a result. My emotions got thrown off. And so I guess actually for the last. Yeah, actually, if the if June began here, I traded that. OK, I traded that. OK, I traded that. OK, I traded that. OK, so I actually did OK for like the first 10 days of June in real life, like following the rules. And then this happened and then this happened and it threw me off and uh, I got subjective and oops. As a uh, result of getting subjective, I ended up just giving away more money than I should have. So I need to go back through and, f and finish up my actual results so we can play the comparison game. But uh, there you have it. Just backtesting per the rule set. Obviously, backtesting is like a, a perfect case scenario. And that's something that I'm finding out every time I, I do this where I trade and then I go back and backtest it. And it's kind of like, okay, it's, it's almost easy to try to fit it to uh to what was going on there but you can also see like you know i changed zones around this zone here um actually had i traded this with the rule set taking type ones and type twos uh i would have done better uh, my type twos would have had to been a little bit earlier on both of these but i remember i didn't trade this i thought about it i looked at it and then thought about it and then i didn't trade it so um part of what i'm going to be doing I think moving forward is uh, I need to redo these zones so that they just match up completely with whatever Don's doing. Um, I, like I said, I honestly hate this zone, but I'm I'm following the rules, guys. Uh, I should probably add. Let's actually add a um, a short position limit order right there. Uh, that's about it. I'll take a loss on that and uh, it'll push up and then I'll get in short in the next zone. I will not set my take profit there though. I'll be looking for profit uh, further down. Um, I'm, uh, I'm trading this one. Like I traded this one. Like if this, if we do push up and hit this zone, I will be short. I'll tag out of this short trade. I will tag into this short trade and I will be shorting it like we did right here where I, I just rode through the chop and then the whole thing down. Honestly, I still, I don't like calling that a zone. I don't know what it is. Um, I mean, look, we can we can clearly see, like, just trace that the whole way back. You can see the the choppiness, the interaction. Um, I don't like calling that a zone, though. But I'm in it now. I'm not happy with it, but I'm in it. <laughs> um, so. We'll see where that one goes. I don't normally trade speed bumps, and that that feels like more of a speed bump to me. I'd, so I need to go through, uh, delete all these zones anyways, and fix things to be what Don currently has. Um, I will continue doing that. I'm going to mimic it in uh, Thinkorswim as well. Um, I hate this platform. 
but I am using it as just sort of a, a hedge in my um, investment portfolio, which is working out okay. And then the other, uh, the neat thing about doing it this way is, um, or something that I'm probably going to start doing, I'm going to do it with smaller position sizes than this one. It'll actually be easier for me to follow the rules on this one because uh, when I'm on the road, I can't access Thinkorswim. Uh, or I can do it on the mobile, but their their mobile app makes me want to just pull out my hair or something equally violent, I guess. And so um, it's it's actually makes me less likely to try to monitor my trades in between. And so I'm probably just going to stick to the rule set. Like it'll be a little bit easier actually to stick to the rule set in this one in my investment account. I'm not watching the PNL. It's not like my primary trading account where I'm really focused on it. Um, I'm just doing smaller position sizes for the fun of it because uh, I I think this system actually works. And uh, for the most part, I know what I'm doing. Futures trading. I just I make dumb decisions sometimes, and most of my red right now is because of options, actually. So uh, maybe I just need to disable my options trading. That's <laughs> why is it that I can trade futures but not options? What's wrong with me? Um, so there you have it. There's the back testing results. Uh, overall, back tested results coming from the beginning of April. And if you've been following along with me, if you haven't, click the little subscribe thing. Uh, but if you've been following along, this is back tested. Uh, I did this back test toward the end of May, and uh, I did not add commissions to the rest of these. So commissions are not going to be a factor in this back test because I'm lazy. But we have a 62.75% win rate, a profit factor of 3.24, which is a fantastic profit factor, by the way, and a net return of $36,000 in three months. That would be risking $500 at a time. Um, even if we only assume that I, I I know I could do better than half that if I just stick to the rules really um, I can do better than half that but if, if, if we assume that you can make half that just sticking to the rule set risking the same amount then you're looking at over fifteen thousand dollars in three months I would take it um, it'd be better than my track record so far so what are my marching orders for July right what, what am I gonna do I'm gonna follow the rules I need to redo these zones, which means I need to get on YouTube at some point or on a live stream when Don's doing his charts and actually copy his charts because uh, TradingView hates us. So, or maybe he'll just send it to me. I'll, I'll message Don and see if he'll send me this. But there we have it. Thanks for watching. Uh, the, I know I'm, my brain's a little bit scrambled right now. It's 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 9:30 at evening, guys, and that's like almost my bedtime. So my brain's done. Um, there we go. Uh, where do I think the market's going? I don't have a freaking clue anymore. I thought we were going south for a long time now, and yet here we are. Clearly, uh, my bias was incorrect. That's why I was red this week. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the future holds when I just start trading these things like I'm supposed to trade them. So, uh, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, do the little thumbs up thingamajig. And uh, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section or on Discord. If you're in Don's group, you know where to find me. My name's Zach. You can find me on there. I'm more than happy to answer anything that I possibly can and, and help work through. Uh, at least my mental process behind what I'm doing because uh, I'm going to make this work. I'm beating my head against a wall right now, but I mean, I made over $2,000 sitting on the beach last week. So I know I can do this. <laughs> that was, uh, that was more fun than it should have been. Uh, just, just for the sheer fact that I did it. So, uh, I want to make that more of a reality. So follow along if you want do the little subscribe thing. I'm going to stop rambling now. I'll see you next time.